Mystics, Monks, Sages, and Rock and Rollers Conversation, a place where science meets spirit. In this segment, I interview people that I admire, people that inspire, and people that are making the world a better place through their work, their words, and their life. So today with me is Alejandra Orozco Quintero, PhD. She's a researcher and development practitioner who for the last 19 years has been living and working in Africa and the Americas. Her international experience working alongside local and indigenous communities in doing applied research to protect communal land and resource rights became her inspiration to support groups and individuals empowerment to assert their rights and change their personal and social reality. In 2019, Alejandra has since 2019, Alejandra has been working both as a development practitioner, helping to transform how we do development and using Site K to support the healing of people dealing with trauma and stress. So I'm super excited to have you here. Aleja, how are you? Fine, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. So today's topics are based on the works of Floris Scovel Shin, her work in, in her book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, which I have a copy of here, which was a translation that Aleja did um, just a couple of weeks ago when she, she published this translation, which I'm excited to, to share with you. And uh, the topic that we're also going to talk about is also based on Dr. David Hawkins' book, Power Versus Force, which Aleja has there um, showing you guys. And the topic uh, that we're going to explore today is levels of mind and levels of consciousness and how understanding them can help us transform for the better. So that's a, that'll be an interesting topic. Um, I personally, I just want to start off with um, saying that for me, consciousness, the word consciousness um, has a million meanings. And the reason for that is because I know, I know Spanish and I know English and, in there's, there's really not a, a term for it in Spanish and in, in, in English consciousness was not something that, um, that we really talked about because when I grew up, I, when I was a little girl, I grew up Catholic and then I grew up, um, an incredibly religious Christian and consciousness was, was not a word. We didn't talk about consciousness. We talked about God. So, um, I want you. I want you to share with with uh, the audience what you what you believe consciousness is, and let's just take it from there. Thank you. So, okay, let's try to 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 address it. So, uh, uh, let's start with the levels of mind. Um, interestingly, uh, as as you know, uh, the book, the game of life and how to play, which was written over one hundred and twelve years ago. Um, talks about how we have this subconscious mind, this conscious mind, and a super conscious, super conscious mind or level of consciousness. And so um, she spoke to it in a very interesting way, connecting subconscious to imagination and conscious to to uh, and to the soul, and in different ways. But we also have very a much more recent research that show us uh, what is the subconscious mind, what is the conscious mind, and what is the subconscious uh, mind that we talk about. So maybe I just explain that briefly, and then we move to understanding these levels of consciousness, which is more what I understand is based on the work of Dr. Hawkins uh, on the book Power Versus Force. So, uh, as we talk right now, we are using both our subconscious and our conscious mind. Our conscious mind is the one that allows me to bring thoughts to, to this moment and to communicate them to you. My subconscious mind is the one that allows me to even just talk because I learned to talk a long time ago and I learned to express myself a long time ago. And the ways I think are from my over 40 years of uh, living. So these, these things are in the subconscious. These are like this deep uh, store. The, it's, our, it's our habitual mind. And it's the, really the one that allows us to operate every day. We don't, when we wake up, we don't have to learn to walk again because we, once we learn it, it is there. The same with beliefs. Once we, we get them, <laughs> they become very strong inside us. Yeah, they, are, they, they become second nature, we say. So there is the conscious mind, which is 
about 5% of our activity at every moment, every given moment is, is conscious mind. And about 95% of our brain activity is subconscious mind. So you can imagine how our habits and memories and things drive so much of our lives. And the superconscious mind is that one, some of us don't believe in it, but many of us believe in it. And this refers to that a higher level of awareness that some people call intuition, some people call the sixth sense. And this, this thing within you that allows you to see that you appeal to when you pray, when you meditate, something that guides you to life. That's what we call the superconscious mind. And this is something even Florence at that long time ago, she talked about that in, in a very insightful way. So those levels of mind, imagine they in so many ways shape how you interact with the world, how you develop yourself and, and play the person you are in this, in this reality. Now, uh, based on the, on the level of consciousness we have, and maybe we will come to define that more, in more detail as we make, understand uh, the idea to examples. Based on the level of consciousness we have, we will, we will choose to act in certain ways or we will choose to, some ways of behaving, some ways of thinking will appeal more to us based on our levels of consciousness. So what do I mean by that? So there is this very interesting map of consciousness developed by Dr. David Hawkins that show us these different uh, levels of up to 200, which are like these more basic instinctive levels of acting. They are, for example, the, the, below 200, we have, we are in a more, uh, yeah, just like more instinctive, more like uh, conflict is a more common thing. Um, aggression is, is justified. And um, these more base qualities, feeling mm -hmm. envy, feeling anger, feeling shame, feeling ho hopeless. This is uh, below 200. We are more within that, uh, uh, within those... Um, uh, ways of operating, you know? we base our, our thoughts and our actions on those levels of emotions. Mm -hmm. I'm, gonna so, have the, I'm gonna have the graph up on the screen so people can, can see it. Fantastic. So, um, and then we get to 200, which is courage, you know, that, that, what, that level is the same level of, um, when you start to, to, to at, at, at all these levels we have, these different understandings of God too, these different understandings of the creator, of the, this higher power, you know, we, we, these many ways we call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, at some levels, we may see him as a punisher. At some other levels, we might see him as somebody that is permitting things. At some level, we might see him as somebody unjust. I mean, it depends on our levels of consciousness, how we see that higher power. So yes. at at the level of 200, we, we, we start to kind of shift towards a new reality. So from courage, then we start to go higher in terms of um, we start to develop trust, we start to develop optimism. So these are all levels we go through as we advance in our level of consciousness. They have an emotional manifestation, but they also have a, a manifestation in terms of deep beliefs and ways of acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's should, almost like, it's almost like levels of vibration, right? Indeed. All, so when, when yeah, you are no. at different levels, you vibrate, when you are at different levels, you vibrate at different levels. It's true. Yeah, because, yeah. because having courage is a, is a certain, has a, almost like a, a certain, quality or a a vibrational signature having you know expressing love expressing compassion expressing empathy those are all 
certain energy levels that, 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 you know, with the technology we have now, we're able to measure. Um, so I love the way that he, that he divides that up and his is numbers, right? He does this in like, um, yeah, he, he's developed his own scale, which I, I, I will have to see the details to give you details that to explain to you, but yeah, he has his own scale, but it is similar to the, uh, the scale we use, like we have seen in different, this triangle. Right, Maslow's hierarchy. Maslow's right. hierarchy, yes. Yeah. So, you know, and then the, the highest peak is the uh, transcending and in, in, in operating at a level where you no longer, it's, it's no longer about you, but it's about others. And it's about contributing, con, uh, being a contributor as opposed to being someone who constantly takes from the world. But, but once, you, once you reach that peak, uh, in the, in Maslow's hierarchy, then then you know that the you know the 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 ultimate uh, goal is, is to serve others, to be of service to others. So I love that. I also know that um, Dr. Hawkins. Uh, the first time I ever um, read his work, um, I came across it um, because it, Oprah at some point had said that that was a, one of the books that changed her life. And that's okay. how impactful that his work has been um, it, with, um, with, within the, the understanding of, of what we believe to, uh, conscien consciousness to be. But I, I still think um, that for a lot of people, depending on how you grew up, for a lot of people having a conversation about what is consciousness, what is super consciousness, um, is, is complicated because, because people don't, if, especially if you're religious, you want to just talk about God and in, 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 in depending on what entity you believe in or what saint you believe in, you want to stick to, to those terms. So I think in, when we talk about consciousness, it's also um, when we want to understand it, we have to discuss how uh, language plays a huge role because a lot of times people are trapped in language. And when we're trapped in this idea that, you know, for a lot of people, God only has one name. Um, but in reality, God is more for me anyways, and this is just a personal opinion. God is more than anything, we, than anything or anybody or any, um, anything we could possibly ever understand. There's no words. There's no, there's no name. There's no, um, place. There's no anything. And I, I think that this word consciousness um, is loosely, I think for nowadays is loosely, everybody uses it consciousness, consciousness, but, but I don't yeah. know. I, I, I'm a little, I'm a little torn between whether we should be using that word or not using that word. What, what are your thoughts on that? So um, <laughs> what you, all the things you have said, I so agree with them. Um, and I, I want to uh, mention in relation to, to consciousness, is that, I mean, in English, it's quite a word. It's very comprehensive. But in, in Spanish, we say conciencia. And it refers more to, you know, more like how guilt you are or how not guilty you are. Okay? Conciencia is very limited in, in, the, in the meaning of it. So yeah. in Spanish, to me, anyways. But, and then we, we don't quite have the word for awareness, for example. But you can also talk higher awareness, uh, referring to consciousness, you know, like and perception, how we perceive the world, and then that's connected to how conscious we are. Mm -hmm. So, just like those deep beliefs we have that are so uh, dependent on our environments and our education and all of these different variables, like the because we are truly naturally we are seekers. We we are these little pieces of this grandiosity and this creation that is so perfect and so divine even when we have all those limitations because we are in this process of seeking we are in this process of raising our level of awareness so you know that in his in his map of consciousness the at the bottom is shame mm -hmm. imagine shame just like i did at the top is enlightenment imagine those two streams and then Indeed, sometimes we feel shame, although we are created divine because of different things, there is this level of shame. So we, but then he explains also how little by little we go through these different stages. Mm -hmm. 
And he, he talks about lives to, to go to the street. I am more optimistic, like, well, maybe we can find this life, you know, to get as high as possible. But um, it's like, it's, it's this process, this conscious process of becoming more acquired. And then the, the moment comes when compassion is not something you are trying. Compassion is something you become. You are compassion, you know, because that, that's what awareness means. That's what deep consciousness means. That you are just a representation of it. Not something that you try, not something that you are aware of, but not something that you breathe, that you are. Yes. So I think this is it. This is the challenge that we get to that level and, and we transform ourselves. And we have different tools like meditation. We have different ways. We can, and even, even psyche can help you to change just like a very limiting belief. And that belief, that limited, limited belief, once it shifts, then you start to open different doors that start to make you more and more aware. And then you start to go, you know, you become, ha your hunger for knowledge and understanding becomes bigger and bigger. And that's, that's how we grow. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. And I'm so glad that you're bringing up all these awesome points. So in, in this book that you did, you translated the game of life and how to play it by um, Florence Scholl Shin. Um, how does she, how does she describe uh, consciousness and what does she talk about when she is talking about consciousness? Because I know that, you know, I've, I've read this book and um, there is a lot of reference to the Bible and um, a lot of religious um, uh, material in it, but what, how does, how does she describe it? What was your take on it when you when you were doing the translation? So she she talks about imagination. How our imagination is is shaped. Uh, it, it's the subconscious mind is like the imagination. So it's like it's and indeed it's like our habitual mind. What we imagine is based on what we believe. Mm -hmm. So she's just like you seeing. Sometimes different words that we hear some people talk, people talking on, in this age about this subconscious and conscious mind, they talk about it a little bit differently. But the, the, the very amazing thing is that she recognized them back then. You know, it's, like, it's not like back then you were talking about, oh, yeah, I have a subconscious mind and a conscious mind. Like, no, <laughs> not like common knowledge. Yeah. But she was able to articulate, oh, wow, the imagination our soul is this thing that is shaping the way we are acting the way we 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 express ourselves in the world and the and the things we manifest as a consequence so if we can change that that's why she say and she quotes the bible on that that it, you need to guard your imagination you say you need to be very protective of what are your subconscious beliefs because those ones will shape your life yes you know, I, as you know, I grew up, I grew up uh, Catholic. And then in my teens, I became a, a born again Christian, and um, was submerged in the Pentecostal religion and um, was really heavily um, indoctrinated in that, um, in that philosophy and that religion. And I, I grew up um, being feeling guilty all the time. I was always guilty. I was always shamed. Um, because I wasn't doing what what God wanted me to do, and because I was a, a sinner and a bad person, and you know, God, I, I had this image. This I imagined, you know, my imagination. Everybody's imagination is is um, is really interesting. But I, I would when I would do something bad, like oh, maybe I I didn't pray last night, or I didn't go to church on Sunday. I would imagine that you know God would would come down from heaven and whip me, you know, and I would be down on my knees and he would hit me, you know, because I deserved it. And it, I mean, it was awful. It was so <laughs> awful. You know, this was, this was um, my belief because I had grown up and, and I was uh, submerged in religion, you know, and, and luckily, as you know, when I came across the work of uh, Greg Braden and, um, and uh, Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer and Dr. Bruce Lipton and, you know, uh, Anita Morjani and, you know, everybody that, that is awake, I think, and aware. Um, hmm. I was, was all, I, I was, I felt like I had been um, like a, and a veil had been removed. And then I was able to see uh, the beauty of, of this, 
greater good for, for what it was. And it wasn't a man or a woman. It wasn't a saint. It wasn't, um, if anything, it, it was a teacher and that teacher had no, the teacher was not a female or male, but it was an awareness. It was a level of understanding that made me uh, become aware that for years I had felt so guilty and so ashamed and that I was such a horrible person, you know, and the reality was it, it was a total opposite. It was a total opposite. And that, that, that almost, I almost felt like I had been violated that, that someone had lied to me about how life really was. And, um, you know, I'm always grateful every day for the religious upbringing that I had. Uh, and I, and I'm most grateful for uh, the, the professors that I had while I was in Bible college that, that helped me get out of religion, that helped me take myself and my understanding outside of religion um, because of all the, 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 the teachers that I had come across with, with books and, and conferences that I was going to. And, and as, I, as I became more aware and became conscious, I, I realized that it was all a, be- a beautiful tapestry of, of a messiness and that, that life is messy and that life is complicated but at the same time, life is beautiful and life is so simple. And that, Indeed. Uh, yeah, and it just, that just gave me chills. But, but, you know, back to this, this, this understanding that I don't think that I'm the only one that grew up feeling guilty and feeling ashamed, you know? So, and when we, when we think about Dr. Hawkins work and it, where he measures this, this shame is like at the very lowest vibration. Yeah. Okay, so could you imagine... Imagine. Yeah, the, the, the very lowest vibration, and most people are walking around with shame and guilt their whole lives. Imagine what that does yeah, to your body, I, what that does to your psyche. You, you just presented a magnificent example. And I think at this stage where we are now, we can appreciate how those ways of us operating at that moment in our lives or the persons around us or the way they were operating, it was just reflecting the level of consciousness at that time. You know, God was this more punitive kind of uh, being. And I mean, it's, it's, it happens to all of us, this level of understanding of God. Like, you know, we, 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 we talk about the fear of God. And then uh, it's, uh, Florence in this book, I mean, and I knew a little bit that really fear is not about he punishing you, but fear is this, you love him so much that pleasing him is like uh, the, the desire of your heart, right? Because he created you and you, you are in love, yeah? And then when you are in love, you, you do everything. So, but this fear of God that was instilled in us, I mean, this only reflected the stage we were at in that le- in trying to understand but yeah truly it's happening yeah, and, to all of us at different yeah. stages and it isn't it wasn't like it was a bad or a good thing it was yeah. just the thing and that was i love how you explain it where it was just that level where i was at and how i understood the world and i don't know who said it is a, a really cool a statement where when you know better you do better that's all is that simple totally. when you know better just do better because you know you could you could I could sit down and, and blame all the institutions and blame all the people and blame, Oh my God, he lied to me. It was all a big lie. And it was, and then I could, uh, but that's not the point. You know, the point is, you know, when we really gear ourselves towards these vibrations that, that uh, Florence talks about that, that um, Dr. Hawkins talks about is really about compassion, love, non-judgment in saying, you know, I allow, I, I allow that to be what it is without judgment. I allow for, you know, that experience to be what it was, you know, and then no longer serves me. So I no longer judge it, you know, and then yeah. you just, you move on with it with, with now I look at my religious experience and my Christian experience as a more of a loving, um, uh, a loving experience of people that were really genuine. They really believe those things. And, and that's okay because, you know, we're all here. I believe we're all here in life to do and to accomplish certain things and only, and everybody's on a different journey. So, and, yeah. you know, let people be people. <laughs> yeah. And if I may, 
Indeed, indeed. Let me repeat this indeed, because if we, if we come back to see our past and then we come and we, we criticize just the, 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 the fact that we see it with bad eyes, it, 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 tells, it tells a lot about we haven't reached a higher level of consciousness because we, we continue to hold things within. So that's why when, when, you, when you have aggression as a response, it's as bad as if you have aggression as a first action. I mean, the response and the no doesn't matter at what time it comes, it's first or second, but it's the same in nature. So you are no better person when you just use the same means to criticize what, <laughs> what you are, you know, like the thing you are criticizing has been using. So truly, is when we become more aware, more conscious, then we look at back and we look at it with more kind eyes. We realize, oh my goodness, how are we learning in this life? Yeah. <laughs> and then, I mean, it took me years uh, just to go back to a, to a temple, to a church, because I had been so uh, uh, wounded from a lot of the, the um, yeah. things I thought were real uh, only that I, and later found out that, Oh, okay. It was different. I no longer see the world that way. And now I can walk into a church um, and talk to my Christian friends and <laughs> without judgment and say, okay, it's just a different level of understanding. And it, I'm not right. They're not wrong and vice versa. It is what it is. They're on their journey. I'm on my journey. Exactly. And, and the goal is to love. And the goal is to have empathy and compassion. And the goal is, to, I love what you said, which is you just embody it. You no longer try to do it or try to be that. You just, you just are that because your actions and the way that you breathe is just an expression of it. And, um, and I love it. I love, I love it. I love this topic. So, so going back to <laughs> levels of consciousness, there was a, there was a, there was to wrap up our conversation. There was uh, something that you mentioned about levels of mind and then levels of consciousness. So we're now we're talking about the mind and and consciousness. So can you kind of give us a uh, your take on the this difference between mind and consciousness? Yeah. So your levels of mind, and particularly what you what you stored in your subconscious mind, it really is a reflection of your level of awareness. So the deeper you are in your understanding, you share limiting beliefs. The more you become detached, the more you vibrate at these higher frequencies of forgiveness, of joy, of understanding. That, that comes as a natural consequence of you raising your level of awareness. And that will reflect on what you believe, what you say with your words, as Florence says, words are powerful and they are very good communicators of how you're feeling within. And then the conscious mind would just, you know, it's this faithful servant that will just undertake any task you give it. So it will communicate, it co will communicate what is in your subconscious or it, it will, it, it does what it does. It will communicate that and it will try to bring some new ideas for you to just start building more things that you then store again in your subconscious. So it, it's just a favor, and the subconscious mind, wow, that's the powerful mind. So if we can little by little raise our level of understanding of this reality, open a little bit up our perception, do very many practices, even just doing service for other person, it can transform our lives. It can really bring us to a level where we say, wow, I mean, really, uh, we, are, we are these amazing human beings, no? This, this, this oh, being, oh, being amazed at, at the creation, these things come from really deeper understanding. That's why at, at some point in your life, you cannot false forgiveness because truly you are not there you really have to it has to be that this natural inclination to realize wow those that hurt me so badly i mean they are so they were so disempowered themselves that they, wh how, how what else could they have done you yeah. know so you, you you become so deep in your the way you see reality that wow, you are so easy to detach from these things that once they were so helpful. 
Yeah. And I think this is it. This is where we want to go. So these levels of mind, they are reflect our uh, level of awareness and understanding is reflected in our levels of mind. And, and they feed each other in different ways. And that's why really our task is just to be these seekers that try to understand more and more and, and apply to life. And then things will naturally come to be the, at this higher level because we are made of this higher thing. We are made of this perfect divine substance, yeah? And this is where we are going anyways. But some ones, yeah, some of us are slower in the process, but it's okay. <laughs> some of us are slower than others. I love it. Well, with that, um, you know, I want to let the audience know that uh, we appreciate you chiming in and um, we're going to be having these conversations um, with Aleja and um, we're going to, as you listen in, you'll be able to learn a lot more about her. And um, is there any last words that you want to share with the viewers, Aleja, regarding the topic and um, any of the future projects you have going on? Thank you. No, I, I, I will I will try to just keep sharing more of these amazing contributions from different authors from the past, far past, I believe. <laughs> so and then make the, making them available in a bilingual version so people can actually use it with family that only speak English or the one that only speaks Spanish and they have fun with it, you know, because these things are really to share and grow with them. So um, uh, it's a pleasure to, to connect with you and be to be with everybody right here right now thank you so everyone well we've come to the end of our conversation and i want to thank you for watching this segment of the mystics Hmong, sages and rock and rollers conversation remember uh, to post your comments below did you benefit from this topic is there a topic that you would like for us to cover in the future let us know so my hope is that through this conversation you become a little wiser a little kinder and that joy becomes a daily part of how you experience the world Remember, you are infinitely loved and your mind and heart are inspiring to help you.